Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today I thought we could have a go at looking through all of our seeds that we're going to be growing in February. February is the most exciting month for me personally because that's when I start all my like warm weather crops. Now you, you could start some chilies um, etc last month uh, or this month really because we're just at the end of it but I tend to grow most of my bulk in February why is that because basically I have to have a trade-off with space um you probably guys already know I live with my partner and living with someone is always a compromise isn't it and he hates having uh, plants on the windowsills and on the dining room table and in the bath and on the windowsill in the bath and on the toilet lid and on the back of the toilet I know he's a really strange person um, so as a compromise he sets up an area in our garage and heats it and helps me do all of that sort of stuff um, so that I don't you know, he doesn't have to like lift off seedlings from the toaster to use it. Uh, we all know what we're like, we're like, we won't do it. And then you, of course you do. He also hates uh, when I have all the seedlings hardened off all around the garden, but you know, you can't always get what you want in life, can you? So we compromise and um, he helps me set up that. So I've already given in the orders. I was like, right, this needs to be done, it needs to be done by then. I like to start off really early, so like, first of January I'm like I need I need the tent up I need the tent up and then I don't get it done until probably about midway through February which is perfect because that's when I start my seedlings so I've always done that that like like that should I say I've learned the hard way I used to start like everything like first of January and that was an issue because a keeping things warm so I had to heat up a like outhouse for months on end and electricity is not cheap <laughs> um also I had um the issue where my plants got so big have you ever tried to start a plant in like January and then keep it alive it's really difficult because it grows so big so it was like a forest and then I had to have loads of grow lights and tables and extensions of it and then I had to harden them off carrying these huge buckets and I'm telling you as soon as I put them out they were like so huge that they were cropping straight away they were really stressed so what I've done is I've just pushed back my sowing dates a little bit you know later so that there isn't really an issue with having them grow too big which is a big advantage um for me personally and it's one of those things that if you do so things too early then you will um like in a nutshell you'll have too big plants or they could get stressed they could get chilled i've lost loads of plants to a sudden frost as well where things got super super cold and my heater wasn't good enough i've only got a little heater in there and basically it's able to keep things about 10 degrees okay which is good because it's like minus two at the moment um at night time so it is kind of like you know a happy medium um but it also takes up a lot of space and etc right so I want to keep as much going as possible so I kind of like look at the things like what do I love the most what do I want to have the most abundant harvest etc so one of the things that I am the most enthusiastic about growing is the humble tomato so I've got a ton of tomatoes that I'm growing this year I am sowing 43 varieties of tomato so as you can guess I like a tomato but the thing is is when I'm looking at tomatoes I want tomatoes that are like really colorful when I do my harvesting basket I like it to look really colorful two reasons why a it looks really nice and although I don't consider myself a massively vain person I am when it comes to my tomato basket I'm a tomato basket snob so I want them all looking different I want them to be like beef steak tomatoes slicing tomatoes um, cherry tomatoes and I want the rainbow in that basket and when I do my sauces I want them to look you know really vibrant and things like that so from the snowiest of white to the darkest of green hopefully i have a decent variety um and sometimes i just buy them because i think their names are cool so there is that and my seed selection 
my seed selection, my seed um, collection is always growing. So I'm always adding to it when I find really cool varieties. So I get them everywhere. A little word about seeds. You always say no GMO on the packet or they might be advertised, no GMO. We can't actually buy GMO seeds, so don't worry about that. I think they just put it on the packet because it's marketing or they just want people to be aware of that. You can only actually get it in the UK where we are that um, if you're a farmer and you're growing like cattle feed or um, some sunflowers to make sunflower oil etc that's where it goes into and margarines and stuff like that we can't actually grow them so something not to worry about but i get them from everywhere you do have to be a little bit careful with some places you get them from but from poundland to i don't know uh b and q they're all fine it doesn't really matter um i try to get them in the sales as much as possible so that i get an absolute bargain and that's why i do my seed shopping tends to be at the end of the season where nobody's buying seeds so I get a good discount um I try to buy everything when it's out of season so I get a little bit of a discount on it that's the way I do it now I do buy and you're not meant to are you I do buy quite a lot of them from Etsy and from um eBay and you are rolling a dice with those bad boys because sometimes they're really good and sometimes for example I bought some chilies and I got bell peppers you live and you learn but there are a few that i've bought like time and time again from and they've always been amazing fantastic germination you name it so it is a luck of the draw but do you know because we live in the uk and i see those amazing seeds that people get in america and i'm like i must have them that i do have to go on to yetsy and i yetsy etsy and i do need to go on like ebay and things like that to find them so lots of these the ones that are lost in these boring packets are ones that i've like specifically thought out um or ones that have come in a multi-pack <laughs> so <laughs> let's get started okay so these are all my cherry tomatoes it is surprising that i don't have any fancy packets for my cherry tomatoes but must have used them all up so yellow pear it is a pear shaped one it's very thin skinned um it is a delicious flavor these ones don't really make it home because they're so snackable the only issue is is because they're so thin skinned that if you go ahead and water them loads their skins will split and then they don't store very well basically but it's not a problem for us my chickens absolutely love tomatoes so any that have gone a little bit bleh, i just go ahead and give them to tomato they're just split and absolutely fine i pop them in my mouth and i eat them jasmine does the same and she loves a cherry tomato chocolate pear the same as a yellow pear but it is browner it's like a ready brownie color i think it's quite beautiful it's got that lovely hour shaped glass again i don't think that these ones split as bad as the yellow pear ones but i do find that yellow varieties or white varieties of tomatoes just are a little bit thinner and less um less able to withstand heavy rain so if it's going to rain heavily go ahead and pick all your tomatoes that you can and can ripen them at home uh, white cherry white cherry is a good variety um it's white obviously and it's a normal cherry shape um it is quite sweet and it's a really really nice mild tomato flavor which is really nice for those of us who like that sort of subtle sort of flavor and kids absolutely go crazy for the cherry tomatoes because they're quite cute and easy to eat orange banana uh, is an orange variety okay, so it is more of a longer shape i don't think it looks like a banana personally so orange banana i personally don't think it looks like a banana it's like a longer shape um but it is orange and it's just one of those ones that really pop off and really look quite vibrant so it's one that i like to include yellow and black yellow and black is one of those variegated tomatoes i generally think this is a very attractive tomato on the top it is blue sorry it's not black i do wonder who comes out with these names of these ones they're like black majesty and you're like dude it's purple but anyway um it is a really cool variety and at the bottom is yellow so anything that gets touched by the sun goes dark and then if it's not touched by the sun it stays yellow and it is very pretty 
it's not the sweetest of varieties it's quite tangy um, and it isn't flavor wise one of my favorites but looks wise it is lovely and I saw these on um, YouTube somewhere I cannot remember where and I really went above and beyond to find them I've got a pack of ten and they're super expensive they're like six quid and I think I got them off Etsy of a, one of the tomato sellers that I've been using for years and they do have very much the look that I was looking for and they are beautiful I do recommend them to like just have a go because you will not find a prettier tomato but they are a little bit of a tangy flavor but once you, if you're thinking you've got all these different from um, tomato profiles it does work out quite nice in like um, a bowl of tomatoes and I don't know if you guys do this but we generally eat bowls of tomatoes I have like a big bowl on the side and it's like help yourself in the summer um we don't do very many snacks um apart from fruit and things like that but when it comes to summer it's like all you can eat buffet when it comes to uh tomatoes and cherry tomatoes so Jazzy loves it and I think they take they really push um, the taste of a tomato sauce up a level when you use cherry tomatoes lovely this one is another one that I went kind of above and beyond and it's from the same Etsy seller it's called evil olive and it was something that I found again I believe on um, on eBay, eBay on YouTube where someone was talking about it. it was an American it took me ages to find it and I was just like wow this is the weirdest tomato that I've ever seen so naturally I had to have it I try to grow tomatoes that are like not as normal as the tomatoes that you get like in the store like in the supermarket because if you do then like I just don't have the excitement of growing them so I try to as much as humanly possible grow things that are a little bit out there a little bit wacky and I just think they look they look weird look do you see what I mean absolute beautiful though and I just think you just don't get tomatoes that look like that you know in everyday life I like the green ones so this is the Mexcanzis one. This is a red tomato. It's just a really good grower. Golden Nugget is one of my favourites. It's one of them ones that if you go to the shop, right, and you go to like a normal, like being cute, right, you would get Golden Nugget in there. But I, I challenge you to find a nicer tomato. And it is so it is just a go -er. it's so blight resistant that at the end of the at the end of the um what's it called at the end of the season when all my tomatoes are like sort of done and it's cold and it's miserable and blight is like come gone conquered I find the golden nugget is still pumping out tomatoes until like October so I have to say, it's my favourite late season cherry tomato, which oh, that is like one of the statements of the century because I love my tomatoes, that's saying something. Uh, red cherry, it is a good one. It is reliable, it's great, and also you have to have a red cherry in there so that you have the variety pack of that beautiful um, bouquet of tomatoes. Fingal is a new variety for me and it is an orange variety of tomato. It's really heavily cropping so it kind of attracts me to it too because I know it sounds like I grow a lot of tomatoes but we eat a lot of tomatoes so we make all of our own sauces we make our own salsas and we're going to be making ketchup this year as well so it's one of them ones where yeah we got to have a lot of tomatoes but we use them all and also fresh eating and we eat them like they're going out of fashion never going to come back so that is a quite an exciting one for me this is my personal all-time favorite uh, cherry tomato it's called black cherry Black cherry tomatoes are so nut. They're they're the best flavored tomato ever, and I like literally eagerly eagerly check these 
for um, ripeness and I'm so excited when they're in season because they're so good. You don't really get them in the shop and they're just so nice. They're like the nicest tomato and actually this is a new pack. They're so good, they're so yummy and I could eat masses of bowls of them. The issue that you have with the black cherry though is that it's good until the rains come. The rains can come mid-September or sometimes before that, as soon as the rain start heavily dropping, the black cherry will split like crazy. But all summer long, it is perfect and it is delicious. And it really does well. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? But it really does well with a little bit less moisture. And you don't ever want to water your tomatoes before you pick them because then they're not as sweet and delicious. And honestly, everything I like, these are the first, I pick these out and eat them myself, which is very naughty because I should just take the whole bowl. But these are so good um i really enjoy them so black cherry will always black cherry and gold nugget even um will always have a like massive staple at my sewing table if you get what i mean um gold crone this is a new variety for me it is a yellowy variety of cherry tomato it is super sweet and we all like the really sweet tomatoes so that's really good has a fantastic texture juicy and a well balanced flavor obviously i've never tried it before but that's what i'm reading about it and i thought you know what that's worth a try so that is why i have it so garnet is like a bronze cherry tomato it is like basically red but it's a little bit darker not as dark as the black cherry but very nice as well it is meant to be a um, t very tangy and nice variety with a decent yield and it looks quite dark and cool so that's why i've gone for that one but there's a new variety new Ooh. do you remember that advert Ooh, suit you, sir. <laughs> so this one i'm going to butcher the name of it's a alpiffin no, our our piffint. There's no p, so why am I saying p? Our fint. I don't know. It's a really high sugar variety, and it's got the really long trellises, which I find quite attractive. Um, and it is got a slight tang but it's not too acidic lots and lots of red tomatoes but it's that long trellis I just think they look really pretty within the garden setting so it's something to look forward to and something to be quite excited about it's got high sugar content so it's going to be super sweet and the super sweet ones are just devoured by the children so I think it's really good and he honestly he loves a tomato so I actually have to hide them from him because he loves a tomato. So um, yeah, he'll definitely be after them ones too. So we're back. Um, sorry, someone was at my door. So, um, And we're going to be looking at the slices. Slices are really cool. They're great in a sandwich and I do put them in sauces. Now you'll notice that almost everything that I, I grow is for sauce basically because we really we really 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 enjoy our tomato sauces it's really quite a important part of why we get why we have our garden really so a lot of this stuff that's on the table in front of me is um the stuff that we use for sauces so so we've got white zebra white zebra is a pretty cool variety slicing potato potato tomato and it basically is really really delicate flavor really quite a mild one it says white but it's more of a yellow one i got this because i really enjoyed the green um zebra tomatoes and i thought i'd have a go and see what this one was like a couple of years ago and it's worked out really great good germination no issues with it at all tagliatelle i can never say that but it is similar to the zebras um it's a striped tomato it's a red one it's i think it's quite beautiful i got this in um the sea calendar i had last year the year before now so it's a really wonderful one i grew it outside obviously full sun all tomatoes needs full sun and it was just great um really great flavor used it in a sauce it was wonderful i like to have once again then variety so those two are going to look really nice next to each other this one is called reese's it's well worth having a little look up of it it's a very unusual tomato i don't really know i was like cherry tomato this one 
I'm not too sure because it is a large tomato, but it actually grows in pieces. And these, apparently, this is what I've heard anyway, this is an American tomato and it was actually brought with the Native Americans along the Trail of Tears. Um, and it's called a traveler's tomato because they could pick off one segment and eat it much like a grape and then the rest would be completely sealed for later use. And I just thought, I like the stories behind um, some of the tomatoes and vegetables that I grow. And I just thought that was fascinating. And it's just a bit of history, really. And I just thought that was amazing. It's called Reese's. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful tomato with a, quite a sad, but a very interesting history, which I just thought was fascinating. This one's called Super Sauce. Now, I don't really grow very many um, sourcing but tomatoes. I say they have potato tomatoes. So I thought I'd give this bad boy a try. Um, so I've never tried this one before, but it's a Roma plum tomato. I do have a few Roma tomatoes in the mix, but I kind of like go heirloom sauce more than I do traditional tomatoes. I also think it has a bit of flavour, and I quite like my sauce quite runny. So I know most people don't, but we use it in like loads of like past dishes and stuff which obviously absorbs quite a lot of the moisture out there but I'm quite excited about that one it's meant to be quite beefy so um, it has less of like the gel in it and more of the meat of the tomato which is exciting got San Marozzo which is another Romo Roma Roma tomato obviously very good for sauces we've got Super Roma another Roma tomato good for sauces um, I don't like eating them fresh though because I find that they taste like they taste like canned tomatoes which is just odd if it's like a cold tomato um, I've got Asian blush tiger Asian blush tiger genuinely is one of the most beautiful um, tomatoes that we grow because it's kind of like, if you imagine if flames were caught up in a tomato, it's kind of what it looks like. It is truly breathtaking. It's one of my favourite. I actually have two seeds left of this bad boy, so I'll definitely be going ahead and saving some seeds. Green zebra, two left um, for this year. I tell you, right, the green zebra has been an absolute trooper. A really fantastic germination rate, which is good. Also has a downside, because sometimes I'm like, Oh, it's the only thing that came up. <laughs> so I end up with loads of them, but they are really good. Mr. Stripey. Um, Mr. Stripey is another striped tomato. You can see it kind of gets licks of um, yellow on there. Another really beautiful one. I've really gone into the striped tomatoes when it comes to my slices. Honestly, if you've got any other tomatoes um, that you really recommend, go ahead and stick them down below, and I'll definitely check them out. Um... Ace 5, 5 which is one of my mum's favourite, is an heirloom variety. It looks like a typical normal tomato, red slicing tomato. My mum really likes growing them, so I start them off and then I give them to her. Alaska. Now, I read that Alaska actually comes from uh, Russia, so it's a Russian tomato. It's quite a nice one. These aren't the fancy ones, they're the round ones, and they're actually good for shorter seasons. Now, that's really good for us because we can't actually plant out until about about May. Now that could be from the 17th of May, it could be the 1st of May. It's very varied. We have to like watch the clock and see what's happening on there. Now saying that, last year I think it was, I watched, I was like there and I was just, you know, everything. And then a week later, no joke, it hailed. And it wasn't even on the weather forecast. I was gutted. It's one of those things, isn't it? So having a shorter growing season can be good, especially here in the UK. We do, we will get blight. But think of all the things you know about the UK, right? We are really rainy, yeah? We are really um, cold, humid. It's just like we are the textbook example of where blight's going to be. So we're going to get blight at one point. So what I try to do is, this is the reason why we grow our tomatoes so early, is so that we can get them out, get them started, get them in before the blight happens. Hopefully we won't get blight until October. That's like ultimate. Last year we got it super early, but super mild, which never happens. It took out a few varieties, like, I mean, gone, dead, goodbye, um, which was a bit of a bummer, but, 
that's the way that things are, you know, um, we're going to go ahead and lose a few crops. But when I grow about 50 tomato plants, if I lose like two or three, I'm not crying about it because I've got enough to last me through. And that's one of the reasons why we grow so many. I'm pretty sure we did 60 actually last year. So I grow some here at the house and over the allotment just in case because that the allotment blight sweeps across it as you probably know. Indigo Rose is a really pretty one. It's quite striking because it's a very, very, very dark almost black colour and at the bottom are blushing. The issue I have with these is you have to look at the bottom to see if they're ripe. So I'm like crouching down like is it green, is it red? Um, but apart from that they're really good. They take a incredibly long time to ripen up or they do in when I've grown them in my experience. So I've found that they 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 get the tomatoes but then they take an incredibly long time. I don't know whether it's because they're so dark, they take an incredibly long time to ripen up. So I like to get that one in super early. This one's called Arugula. It is a, another red tomato to go into the mix. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna have a nice like variety set on those bad boys. So these are one of my favorite categories of tomato beef steak tomatoes now beef steak tomatoes are awesome i really like them and i like growing really quite large tomatoes i just think it's a bit of a challenge now this one is star rusco um it is a very beautiful variety it's purple it's variegated purple and um yellow and i actually struggled to get these i think i got them on etsy uh, but they were a struggle to get and I saw these on a YouTube, an American YouTube and I was like, mission accomplished, I will find them and I think they took me like 11 months to find or something like that it was ridiculous um, sometimes I really do go into like a rabbit hole finding some of these seeds Purple Calabash Purple Calabash is one of my favourite tomatoes um, because of the flavour of it it's super yummy and it has a really rich flavour there's like not any better tomato really of the purple calabash. Purple calabash, chocolate, stripe and black crim are my favourite beefsteak tomatoes by a landslide so far. I really think they are very, very nice tasting. So they always have a permanent role in the garden. Mm. Cow heart. Cow heart does not look anything like a cow heart. These never look like a cow heart, but they are beautiful. They're really tapered together and crinkly and I think they look very beautiful so I kind of fell in love with them last season because that's my first season growing them so I'm definitely going to be growing them again rainbow tomato I've got two packs of these bad boys they are incredibly beautiful beef state tomatoes they kind of look like orange yellow and red if you get what I mean like tie dyed they look really pretty and I saw this on someone's channel can't remember who and I was like I must have it so I spent ages looking for this um, variety but once again it's probably from Etsy I don't think it was from it, eBay the, there's such good varieties on Etsy I have to say but once again you're taking a gamble because they're not they're there homegrown home saved let's see this one I'm super excited about it is Dr Witchy Dr Witchy is one of those um, American varieties and I just thought it looks super cool with its like orange skin you can get it in yellow as well but I got it in orange and it is a beautiful tasting tomato and I was super super excited about that Ananas, this is another one. Oh my goodness if Christmas was a tomato it would be this tomato it is green and you slice into it and it's red and it's all kind of higgledy piggledy it's, it is so beautiful it is a absolutely stunning tomato i was so so psyched when i found these seeds i can't explain to you i was super super excited and because it's not as easy as it is in some places we seem to have much limited varieties than when they do in the usa i think it's because we don't have the equivalent of a baker's creek i have heard that you can order seeds from baker creek into the uk but because of 
like our import tax and stuff like that, they can be quite costly. Blue beef steak tomato is just a normal red one. I like to have, um, this came in a multi-pack, but I like to have things like this because it kind of balances out the kind of colours that you get. And it's nice to have something that goes against all the strange colours as well. I'm probably going to butcher the name of this. Ar Arokika. It's a yellow variety. I think this comes in orange as well, but I went for yellow. It is a large beef steak variety. It's really quite a delicate flavour, which is really nice. I thought it'd look quite nice. Great white, which is a, it's a very pale yellow, um, almost white, and it's a very, very, like I said, delicate flavour. Really good. Crack of salt on that. It's absolutely delicious. Ox heart. Ox heart is another one um, that doesn't really... I think this looks more like a heart than the cow heart does. It's a red variety. You can get them in every colour. I saw some in pink the other day. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't have very many pink tomatoes. Might have to invest in them, mightn't I? But it was really quite a cute kind of love heart sort of if you've never seen a love heart before, shape, which is nice. So another one of the Beefsteak Rainbow. Such a pretty variety. Uh, chocolate Stripe, one of my favorite varieties. It's brown or very close to brown with stripes on it. I believe they're green stripes with my memory serves. These are very tasty tomatoes. One of the first ones I grew when I started growing all of those years ago. Um, and it's still on my table, so it must be very good. Uh, Black Crim, another one that is just an absolute winner. This one's really beautiful because it doesn't have the um, is it cat face in, like it doesn't have the really quite dry sort of blemishes on it. It's a very pretty tomato. This actually spontaneously grew last year in my garden and I was well happy about it. Pleated tomato, they are really weird. They don't really have very many seeds in them. They're really meaty. Um, but I did have an issue with this one with blight last year. Um, but I will, I'll always give it another go. And because I just think it's a very pretty one. It's kind of like something that you just wouldn't get unless you grew it. So these are the tomatoes that I'm growing this month, which is very exciting. So moving onwards and upwards, and our onwards and upwards goes to eggplant, okay? One of them's not here. I've actually ordered some more Turkish eggplant, um, which I'm super excited about. Um, hopefully it will come very, very soon. Eggplant really needs a long season, I've found personally. And there's tons of different types of eggplant. I mean, there's loads of eggplant that you can, you know, that you've so, um, that you get in the supermarket. But I kind of go for like the weird ones. One of my favourite one is called a Turkish eggplant. Or Turkish aubergine, I should say, because I'm English. Um, but um, aubergines are super, super cool and really, really diverse. So this um, orange one that I saw, it's about the size, about that big. It is the most delicious eggplant or aubergine, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever eaten in my entire life. It is super yummy. Um, I really love it. So it is something that... I am definitely going to try to keep. It's super hard to germinate. So this year I'm going to do the um, uh, kitchen roll method where you get a piece of kitchen roll, you spray it, you put the seeds on top and then you put another piece of kitchen roll, wrap it up in cling film or put it into a bag and keep checking it every few days. That worked really well when I last did it. So I'm going to do it for my more difficult to um, chit seeds so my tomatoes these and probably my chili plants as well so this one's called rosa blanca which is a very nice variety of eggplant so this type of um, variety kind of looks like a posh chocolate egg as you can see i think it looks dead cool and um I just think it does look like, like it's almost, you could bite into that and it'd be like a fake chocolate. Um, like, oh, what are them called? Gillian's, them, them chocolate shell things. That's what it reminds me of. For, I really like that variety, so I thought that was cool. This one is an eBay um, one and it's a white eggplant. This is the aubergine that makes you think, like you always thought, why is it called an eggplant? Then you see this variety... And you're like, wow, they look like eggs growing off there. So I have a mixed variety of aubergines as well. And they have loads of like mini 
aubergines. I quite like the small ones because I find they're really convenient. I grow these, drum roll please, for tomato sauce. So, um, lots of them go into our tomato sauces. I don't really use eggplant for anything else or aubergine for anything else. Um, we didn't grow up eating aubergine. It wasn't something that we had in our household. So, it's like a new forte for me. And people always say, grow what you eat. And I never did that. I kind of was like, let's find the weird stuff and grow what nobody eats. Um, but it is important to enjoy what you grow, obviously. But I have to say, I really like the aubergines and sauces. I think they make a more complicated and complex flavour to um, a sauce. And they're full of vitamins and minerals, which I'm just like all about. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and keep these and go ahead and stick them in my tomato sauces so that we can have a really complex flavour. I like to put as much vegetables in there as humanly possible. Right, onwards and upwards. So this one is a really cool, and I think one of the most diverse categories that you can sow in seeds, and that's right, it is the brassicas. The brassicas is, you can, they all come from one plant, and you can go from spicy mustard seeds all the way to uh, pak choy. It is really massively like different, you know? So let's start off with some cauliflower. This is actually called graffiti. It is a purple cauliflower, which is pretty cool. And um, you can sow outdoors from March, but if you sow it in February, you get like a little bit of a head start and then you can harden it off in March to go outside, which would be really good. Obviously, if you're like, chipping into the snow, <laughs> then that's a bad idea. What? What? See, he, he doesn't like the idea. You never, never sow out just because the the sea packet says always look at the weather as well. Pak choy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Got quite a few pak choys. This one's called Green Revolution. I've got another one which is red um, and that's called Ruby, but I don't know where that is at the moment. Um, that's why you really need to go for your seeds so, sort of early so you know where everything is. I like pak choy, I like baby pak choy, and really you can have a if you keep sowing these all the way through, you can have them all the way up until December, baby pak choy, which is great for stir fries. Bye, Bailey. Um, kohlrabi, kohlrabi is great. It is a swollen stem that you're eating there. And kohlrabi is one of them things that you just don't really, like, find in the shops. But whenever you have people over, and I said this before, I've done them as crudite. We had um, baked camembert with crudite. And that was part of the mix of the old crudite. And honestly, it was like, it was a showstopper. Everyone was like, oh, what is that? Oh, it's really nice. And of course they are because they're polite people. But no, they really liked it, I promise. And, um... That, did, did you hear that bang? Uh, this one's called Olivia. So it is quite a nice variety. Um, I get different ones every year. This one's called Pop Purple Vanilla. Vene vanilla? Vienna got there in the end. Uh, this is the same as that one, but it is purple. So, yeah, the only issue that I have with some of these seed packets is like, I wish I had pictures on them, because then you'd be like, oh, that's nice. But they're, they're really great variety, super easy to sow, great germination rate. Now, moving onwards and upwards, this is something that I never grew, because I was like, what a waste of area. I used to think, like, unless it was like, can't come again, it wasn't really worth growing. Um, but now I obviously see the, the terrible, terrible um, ways that I used to have. And I got some. This is normal calabrese or broccoli. So I normally grow the sprouting broccoli. But this one's super great too. And it has less of a growing, like, time. Whereas purple sprouting broccoli takes, like, years to grow. Which makes it really cool. I've gone for two varieties here. I've gone for one called... Uh, Kovana, which is an autumn variety. You can sow uh, indoors March, April, May, and then outside May, June, July. So that's quite exciting. 
Uh, this one is called Marathon. It's an F1 hybrid. Um, it's got a beautiful amount of broccoli on there. My daughter loves broccoli. My daughter loves brassicas. She um, actually refuses to eat cauliflower for ages. And then last night we had toad in the hole, right, which is sausages in batter. Um, it makes sense, trust me. In like a Yorkshire pudding. And she had... I always give her vegetables and we make her try them because I think it's important and she ate not just her cauliflower but everybody's cauliflower she's like are you, are you eating that cauliflower um, what's happening with the cauliflower and we just gave it to her we was like right okay if we give you the cauliflower you'll stop asking about the cauliflower right so she ate my cauliflower my partner's cauliflower everyone's pot cauliflower so it just shows that you still have to you know get their palates used to things and she loves broccoli um, she loves anything that's a brassica really, loves Brussels sprouts, she's very strange, so, yeah, weirdly enough, she's not that fond of cabbages yet, which is weird, because if you gave me a cabbage, or you gave me a Brussels sprout, I'd be like, cabbage all the way, but yeah, she loves a strong flavour, okay, so, uh, this is a greyhound one, I love this variety, I actually used up my last pack, and bought a new one last year, I never throw away a seed packet. I use them until like they stop germinating. Um, I really like this variety. I just think it's a really, it's um, a really like hardy variety and it grows quite fast, but it's got a really quite dense head on it, which is just ultimate. I just really like the flavor of it as well. It's quite sweet for a brassica, okay? I'm not saying like you're sitting there going, quite oh, tastes like it's got sugar in it, but it's sweeter than say a bitter Brussels sprout. Um, you've got Romanov, which is an F1 hybrid. As you can see, I do use a variety. I do use F1 hybrids, and I do use um, heirlooms, just depending on what I get. I buy everything, so I'm not. I'm not too choosy. But as you can see, that is absolutely. I just love those variegated leaves. I actually just made um, some canned coleslaw and it had the variegated leaves in it and I just thought it looked so nice. The outside's variegated and as you go in it gets more and more purple and my partner just likes purple cabbage, which is, you know, if he eats it, it's wonderful. Um, Dutchman is another um, cabbage that we grow. I don't think don't think I've grown this one before. I don't really remember, to be honest, but we love a cabbage, so we always make sure that there is a large um, netted area for our cabbages. Uh, Greyhound, another packet of them. I honestly never want to run out of them because they're such, they're such a good cabbage. I really enjoy those. Another one I really like is called April, which is um, a very similar pointed cabbage. I think they're called conical flat cabbage. They're called conical cabbages, and they're really quite nice as well. So they're going to be something that I'm going to go ahead and grow. Brussels sprouts. One of the most important um, dishes in our household. My daughter loves a Brussels sprout. Um, she even eats them raw. We actually, when she was much smaller, we used to grow our Brussels sprouts next to our strawberries and she used to crawl underneath the Brussels sprouts and sit there eating strawberry, eating Brussels sprout, eating a strawberry. And we actually had to net them from her and keep her out with the Brussels sprouts because we wouldn't have no for Christmas. Um, now this one is called a Goring a Brussels sprout. It's meant to be a little bit sweeter because um, some Brussels sprouts can be really bitter and quite um, yeah they're not that bad you can get used to them I'm like a very like strong believer in if it grows well we got to eat it luckily Jazz loves these so it's not a problem but I quite like them with, if you cook them boil them then saute them in bacon and bacon fat perhaps cover them in cheese then they're actually quite delicious. So I'm just always trying to find new ways of uh, gr growing and uh, cooking things that taste nice. But I think it's really important. You want to love the food you're eating and you want it to be healthy, of course. But yeah, the reason we've got that is because it's a high yielding and it's got these big um, brussels because we can't, she likes the big ones. And 
autumn to Christmas, we mostly eat them around the Christmas holidays. Even now, we've got a bag of Brussels sprouts on the side and we'll keep eating them until they stop producing. And lucky me, I know. One of my friends gave me this, I think, and it's just a generic Brussels sprout. I'll be sowing those as well because, um, oh, they've got red Brussels sprouts in there as well. Now, because they're such an important variety for us, we don't want to go for just one one type of Brussels sprout because my daughter would be gutted if she doesn't have Brussels sprouts throughout the winter months because she really enjoys them. Some people do, don't they? Um, I don't mind them. I have to say, do you know, I like them two ways. I told you one way already. And I like them like stir fried in like stir fries really and uh, with chicken and stuff like that and instead of cabbage like a substitute really nice like that i really enjoy them like that so just finding like unusual ways my nan used to serve them boiled um and i remember the house went in a brussels sprouts and that's probably something that we we all remember <laughs> So, right, now this one's quite an exciting one. It's something I actually used to really hate, um, and it's the it's the humble parsnip. I used to hate parsnips with a passion. It's like Brussels sprouts. I used to hate Brussels sprouts, and now I'm, like, coming along to, like, well, they're not that bad. And the parsnip. I used to hate parsnips. But then, like I said, I continuously find different recipes to, like, try to tickle the old taste buds. And honey roasted parsnips... I could eat, like, I could eat enough for an army. They're so good. So, yeah, they're really important for, you know, having that. They're really good for you, okay? So, honey roasted parsnips. That's what I'm excited about. I've got white gem, which I've done before, which went really well. And duchess, which is an F1 hybrid. Now, they are renowned for being really bad at germinating. And I've germinated them in a few ways. So, I've put them into the soil wet damp soil in a bag and then sprinkled that over where I was going to go ahead and sow them that works really well getting them in nice and early seems to work as well because it's cold outside and these are cold loving which is really weird because tomato <laughs> carrots you can't sow until March right but these you have to sow in early so I go ahead and sow them like now and then I have a few times that I can go ahead and try as much as I'm able to sow these so that they can take and I do them quite thickly because I don't know they seem to only want to grow in my front garden so I tend to grow um, a load of parsnips and I have a load of parsnips in my garden currently that I need to go ahead and pull out but this weather where it's so cold is so good for parsnips so I'm going to let them like absolutely be demolished by the cold and they're all flopped over and things at the moment because they become incredibly sweet and more delicious uh, because of that so you have to treat parsnips quite horribly um, <laughs> and then you get a good sort of variety from them I also because I grow them in my front garden I don't really get carrot fly and I think the reason why I don't get carrot fly in my front garden is because to be honest down my entire road nobody really grows vegetables we used to have one elderly couple that did and they had a beautiful garden but I believe they've moved away so they obviously are not growing anymore so the carrot fly doesn't really have very much to do around here so I don't tend to get it round here however in the allotment you do get carrot fly so I do think and they do tend to grow in my front garden better even though my allotment has much better conditions than what I have here so who knows who knows um another one that I'm going to be sowing is a radish radishes I really dislike it when radishes are too spicy I like them when they're really mild so if you grow them in spring they tend to be really mild so I'm going to get them in nice and early and within 30 days you get a harvest which is just a bargain isn't it four weeks from sowing you get a harvest I do grow these quite a lot for my nan and I drop them around my nan's house uh, she loves a radish even when it's really spicy so if I grow a load of them I can just give them to her periodically which is nice I like giving things as presents people get such random presents from me they're like can't I just have something normal I'm like no I made this or I grew this okay moving onwards and upwards now I grew 
red um, celery last year. We use it for stocks, really important. We love chicken stock. I've just used my last of my chicken stock. So I will be going ahead and making a whole host of stock soon. So I love celery and of course leeks. This is pink celery, it's really pretty. I've grown this um, a couple of times and it's it's like bubblegum pink and it's really quite nice. The leaves are a little bit variegated but it's actually the stem that looks so fantastic. I've grown the red variety as well last year. So I'm probably, I'm either, I think this is blue pink, it's definitely pink. Um, I'm probably gonna grow, if I do grow it because they tend to um, be two years in a row. So if that's true, then I'm gonna keep the celery I have. But if it does look like it's gonna struggle, I'm gonna go ahead and do the pink celery. This is so pretty. I like to have the different colors in there. Also, pink and red um, celery are much easier to grow than green celery. Green celery can be quite tricky. The trick for it is not to bury the seeds. You've got to lay them on top of the soil and then put them by either a really bright window or by a, um, what's it called? A grow light because they actually need the light to germinate, which is unlike most, most seeds. Um, leeks, I love a leek. Leek to us is like a dead posh onion. It's like when you view like, oh, I really want to make a really fancy meal, you're like, get the leeks out um what we do is we grow a load of them and then we strip them all down stick them in the freezer and when we're making stock that's when we pull them out when i make soups that's when i pull them all out this is one it's called norwich norwich is an f1 hybrid and the reason i got this is because it's meant to have quite a large white part now a lot of you told me that if i earth them up i'll get more of a larger neck so i'm going to be doing that this year. I'm super excited about this particular variety. Um, I don't know, it holds a lot of potential for me. I really like leeks, but I do want a larger white part. I do use the green part as well. I'm not too sure if you're meant to or not, but I always think like, why not? If I'm gonna blend it up anyway, where's the harm? I think it's a little bit woodier than the tender white part, but what can you do? Well, you could not eat it, I guess. Last but not least, now this is a really sort of underappreciated part of the garden, especially with us old vegetable go um, growers, always thinking, no, 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 we want our space for our vegetables. I generally think that there needs to be quite a large space for flowers, and I don't think that we give them enough. So this is called Canterbury Berry Bells, and these almost look like bluebells they're really quite beautiful um and this is a mixed variety i got them from bargain seeds like i said i buy things from absolutely everywhere whenever i see anything that's going quite cheap i'm like oh i'm gonna get them um i'm quite excited about these ones and having them because they're going to be something that's super bee friendly and i love my bees uh, these are cosmos that i saved myself so all different colors of cosmos i've also kind of like squish the cosmos down and hopefully it will reseed itself it did last year um, this is the original packet of cosmos that i had all different colors and varieties now i'm telling you they cross over and they make beautiful like pink flowers with like white edges and stuff and they are really quite beautiful each year i save the seeds from them and they're just changing because they interbreed don't they so you get like a big variety difference um this is called scabious berry uh mix it looks like you can't really see it there can you but it looks like um a bachelor button you know like people put in their lapel for when they're doing uh, weddings and stuff they're quite beautiful these are all different shades of pinks blues and purples so i thought that was quite nice this one here a srana it is it kind of reminds me of a what's it called um bindweed flower it's obviously not but they do look like it didn't they my daughter picked these because it's got the perfume and she likes anything that smells really nice they also attract insects and butterflies which is really important uh, this one's called blue star it's really pretty once again i think it looks dead nice i want to have so down my 
down my aisle, as it were, I'm gonna grow flowers again. Like, you know how you walk down when you're getting married? Kind of like that, but when I walk down it, because I find I just get absolutely transfixed watching the bees and stuff, and I think they're beautiful. Uh, this is called Sunshine Mix, and look how nice they look. I grew quite a few of these ones last year. Um, and they lasted forever until the frost sort of killed them off. Um, but I'm hoping, obviously it's a multi-pack of different colours, hopefully I'll get a load of different ones this year. And they were beautiful, they were really, really breathtaking. Zinnia! Zinnias are one of my favourite, I grow these every year from seed. Um, it's really easy and cheap to grow zinnias from seed. You can get them anywhere. Get them on Amazon, you can get them on eBay, you can get them in any shop. And like you pay about, I think this was one ninety nine for this pack of 50, okay? Now zinnia bulbs are super expensive, but if you've got zinnia seeds, then I might say zinnia, aren't I? Dahlia, dahlia seeds and dahlia bulbs. Um, so this is the most economic way of doing it. I always get the mixed varieties and I'm going to sow as many of these as possible this year. I give them away as well for presents, especially around about Mother's Day. For my mother's mother's, <laughs> mother's, mother's day, for my mother's mother's day every year, I start off all of her seeds and she absolutely loves that because she doesn't start off any of her seeds herself. So um, this is something she's asked for. Zinnia. <laughs> zinnia seeds are really cool. I really like zinnias. This one I believe is called Giant Cactus. So it's all spiky. Um, and they're all different variety of colour. I like getting the multi-packs of these. Marigold. Um, this is a different type of marigold which I've forgotten. I think it's a cal calendar. Calendar. Well I got a volunteer one this year didn't I? And it looks like it's not died off so I'm super excited. Anything that's free I'm 100% for. French marigold. Marigolds apparently are super, super good for getting the bugs to go on them and not attack your plants. And I know that the rabbits really like marigolds, so they leave my plants alone. These ones are just called butterfly mix. They're wild flowers. Um, these ones, I believe Jazzy got them for her little patch. She loves a wild flower. So... I've grown them a few times and you get everything obviously different each time and you can see that there's absolutely loads of just different um, colours and varieties and poppies. I love poppies because as soon as you sow them, that's it, you've got them for life. They like, they're not perennial, don't get me wrong, but they do a good impression of it because they spread everywhere. I've got some uh, poppies in my home garden, I've never... I think the first year, to tell I, first year I put poppies in there, I've never sowed them since. And every single year I get these beautiful blood red poppies and the petals just scatter everywhere. And they're just, they're so nice. But the best thing is about them is I grow them next to my strawberry patch. So you've got strawberry patch and then you've got the poppies. And the poppy um, leaves go everywhere. They just scatter everywhere. And the birds get confused with the red poppy leaves when it comes to my tomato to, uh, my strawberries being ripe no bird damage at all because they're so used to they're like oh that's just a poppy leaf so i thought that was a really fantastic idea because uh, i used to spray paint um rocks to look like pop uh, to look like strawberries and put them in but i think that's the best way to do it really because it's nature does it and i don't know what i do know jasmine's the one who's disperse the um, the poppy petals everywhere. She does it every year, and I'm like, please don't pick them because they look so nice. And she's like, why? I didn't pick them. They exploded. Okay, I completely forgot about this whole category. Tomato, blah, blah, blah. potatoes. You can start chitting your potatoes if you are in our zone. We are in nine. Z uh, 9A, which is hardiest zone, 9A. Then we're actually going to be going ahead and chitting out potatoes at the end of Ma um, at the end of February, which is three weeks um, into February. We're going to be starting chitting them. Can't actually plant them out. I never plant them out before the 17th of March, which is um, St Patrick's Day. Am I boring? Um, so yeah, that's the last thing we're going to be sowing. In February, I'm so excited about February. So, so excited. 
So um, yeah, I'm super excited about this month. As you go through these months now, it's March, April, May, June, July, you get you have so much to sew. And then after July, it's like, oh, there's less, oh, there's less, oh, there's less, oh, there's less. So I just love this time of year where everything has so much potential, you know? Now, if you're thinking, wait, 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 Nick, where are your sweet peppers and where are your chilies? Well, I did that video the last one. So if you want to see what I'm sewing in January, please go ahead and look at that video. And if you um, have not already, please consider subscribing because it's awesome when you do. It means that you get a uh, notification when I put up content, which is every Friday now. Um, and yeah, I will see you next time. Have a wonderful week. If you've got any suggestions for what I need to grow, put them down below and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Hello. Hello, hello. Right, <clears throat> start again. Just a little. No. I just did that one. Oh, Alexa, stop. Chocolate pear. Tagli taglia. Ah. <laughs> I was like, where did I put them? Okay. Ooh, these are.